Have you ever been rejected by someone you deeply cared for? It's a question that echoes in our hearts, a familiar ache that most of us have felt at one point or another. Rejection is one of those universal experiences that binds us as humans. It's the sting of a heartbreak, the ache of a love unrequited, the silent sob of a dream unfulfilled. It's the world telling you no when all you wanted was a yes, and it is undeniably a part of life. Now, I'm not here to tell you that it doesn't hurt. I'm not going to feed you cliches like everything happens for a reason, or what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Because let's be honest, when you're in the throes of rejection, those words can feel hollow and meaningless. Rejection in all its forms is painful. It's a blow to your ego, a scar on your heart. It's a reminder of your vulnerabilities, your desires and your human need to be loved and accepted. And there's no shame in admitting that. It's okay to feel hurt. It's okay to mourn the loss of what could have been. It's okay to feel confused, to question your worth, to wonder what you did wrong. But here's the thing about rejection. It doesn't define you. It doesn't diminish your worth or your value as a person. It's a moment in time, a chapter in your story, but it's not the whole book. It's not who you are. So, yes, rejection stings. It's a harsh reminder of our human frailties, our dreams unfulfilled, our hearts broken, but it's also a testament to our strength, our resilience, our ability to heal and grow and love again. It's a part of life, but it's not all there is to life. Rejection is a sting, a hurt, a pain, but it's also a chance for growth, for learning, for self-discovery. It's a part of your journey, not your destination. Rejection can sting, but it doesn't define you or your worth. Let me tell you a story about a man named John who found himself in the throes of rejection. John was a man of simplicity with a heart full of love. He cherished a woman for years, a woman he had known since childhood, a woman he considered his world. There was a certain charm about her that made him believe she was his one true love. He nurtured this love for years, hoping one day she would reciprocate his feelings. One sunny afternoon, John finally mustered the courage to confess his feelings. He wore his heart on his sleeve, expressed himself with sincerity, and waited for her response with bated breath. But instead of the acceptance he'd dreamed of, he was met with rejection. His heart sank, and he was enveloped by a profound sense of despair and loneliness. The rejection was a bitter pill to swallow, his dreams were shattered, and his heart felt as though it had been tossed into an abyss of sorrow. It seemed as if his world had crumbled, leaving him alone amidst the ruins. His heart was heavy, his eyes were teary, and he was lost in the labyrinth of his thoughts. Days turned into weeks and weeks into months. John was drowning in his sorrow and was unable to see beyond his pain. He felt like a broken man, a ship lost at sea with no land in sight. But then, amidst the chaos, he stumbled upon a lifeline, a beacon of hope, Stoicism. Stoicism, an ancient philosophy, was a concept foreign to him. But the more he delved into it, the more it resonated with him. He discovered that Stoicism teaches acceptance of what is beyond one's control and learning to find peace within oneself. John found solace in the teachings of Stoicism. He learned that the pain he was experiencing was not due to the rejection itself, but his perception of it. He realized that he was not alone in his suffering, that rejection is a universal human experience. And most importantly, he learned that he had the power to control his reaction to the situation. John began to see his heartbreak not as a pit of despair, but as an opportunity for growth. He understood that the pain he felt was temporary, and with time, it would lessen. He learned to detach himself from the outcome and focus on his personal growth and well-being. Embracing Stoicism didn't make his pain disappear overnight, but it gave him a new perspective, a new way to navigate through his heartbreak. He started to accept his situation, and instead of dwelling on his sorrow, he focused on healing. He found strength in Stoicism, a strength that fueled his journey towards recovery. And so John began his journey towards healing, guided by the principles of Stoicism. What exactly is Stoicism and how can it help in dealing with rejection? 
Stoicism, my dear friends, is more than a philosophy. It's a way of life that originated in ancient Greece and Rome. At its core, Stoicism teaches us to detach from our emotions, to observe them without judgment, and to understand that our reactions, not external events, define our reality. The principles of Stoicism are simple, yet profoundly effective. The first principle is the dichotomy of control, which encourages us to focus on what we can control and accept what we cannot. When faced with rejection, we often try to control the other person's feelings or decisions, which, as you might have experienced, is a futile endeavor. Stoicism nudges us to accept the rejection and focus on how we respond to it, which is within our control. The second principle of Stoicism is objective representation. This means seeing things for what they truly are, devoid of any emotional bias. Rejection, though painful, is not a reflection of our worth, but a mismatch of feelings, circumstances or compatibility. It's not personal and it's not the end of the world. Stoicism encourages us to see rejection as an event, not a judgment of our character. Lastly, Stoicism talks about understanding the bigger picture. The principle of amor fati, or love of fate, teaches us to embrace whatever life throws at us, including rejection, as part of our journey. It's not about being passive, but about seeing every event, pleasant or unpleasant, as a piece of a larger puzzle that shapes us into who we are meant to be. So how can we apply these principles to cope with rejection? When we are rejected, we can practice the dichotomy of control by accepting the other person's decision and focusing on how we react to it. We can choose to see rejection not as a catastrophe, but as an opportunity for growth and self-reflection. We can use objective representation to remind ourselves that rejection is not a measure of our worth. It's just an event, a moment in time that passed. It doesn't define us, and it doesn't determine our future. Finally, understanding the bigger picture helps us realize that rejection is just one chapter in our life's book. It's not the whole story. With time, we will see how this event has contributed to our growth, helped us build resilience and pave the way for better things to come. Stoicism doesn't erase the pain of rejection, but it can certainly help us navigate through it. Embracing Stoic principles doesn't mean we won't feel the sting of rejection, but it does equip us with the tools to handle it with grace, resilience and wisdom. And that, my friends, is a far more empowering narrative to hold on to. As John applied Stoicism to his life, he began to see changes. Our John, once tethered to the whims of his heart, started to see the world through a different lens. The sting of rejection, which once consumed his every thought, started to lose its venom. This was not an overnight transformation, but a gradual shift in his perspective, brought about by his embrace of Stoicism. John began to understand that the rejection he had faced was not a reflection of his worth. It was merely a circumstance, a moment in time that did not define who he was or what he could become. He came to realize that his value was not tied to someone else's approval. He was not a puppet dancing on the strings of someone else's whims. He was his own person, unique and valuable in his own right. This was a breakthrough moment for John. It was like a fog lifting, revealing a landscape of endless possibilities. He was free to pursue his own path, to shape his own destiny. He was no longer bound by the chains of rejection. With this newfound freedom, John turned his focus to self-improvement. He began to cultivate his interests, to explore new hobbies and passions. He took up painting, started reading philosophy, and even learned how to play the guitar. He started to appreciate the beauty of solitude, to savor the quiet moments of introspection. He also started to take care of his physical health. He began to exercise regularly, to eat healthier, and to get enough sleep. He realized that his body was his temple, and he had to take care of it. But perhaps the most significant change in John was his attitude towards rejection. He no longer saw it as a crushing defeat, but as an opportunity for growth. He understood that every rejection was a lesson, a chance to learn and become better. He stopped fearing rejection and started to embrace it. This was not an easy journey for John. There were moments of doubt, moments of weakness, but he had the strength of his convictions to fall back on. He had stoicism, a philosophy that taught him to accept the things he could not change, to focus on the things he could, and to have the wisdom to know the difference. 
John's transformation was not just about dealing with rejection, it was about understanding his worth, focusing on self-improvement and changing his perspective on life. It was about breaking free from the chains of approval and embracing his own path. John's journey wasn't easy, but he found strength in Stoicism. And in this strength, he found the courage to face any rejection, any challenge that life might throw his way. He was no longer a victim of his circumstances, but a master of his destiny. And that, my friends, is the power of Stoicism. But what about the longing, you ask? How did John handle missing the one who rejected him? Well, let's delve into that. John found himself grappling with a deep sense of longing. It was as if a part of him was missing, an ache that seemed to echo in the hollows of his heart. But instead of resisting this feeling, he embraced it, not as a sign of weakness, but as a sign of his humanity. He acknowledged this longing as a natural response to loss, something we all experience at one point or another. He turned to the principles of Stoicism, a philosophy that teaches acceptance of things beyond our control. Longing, like the weather or the passage of time, is not something we can simply turn off at will. It's a part of life, a part of the human experience, and so John accepted his longing as a natural part of his journey, a testament to the depth of his feelings and a reminder of his capacity to love. But acceptance is just the first step. The key is not to let this longing control our actions or dictate our lives. John understood this. He did not let his longing for his lost love lead him into desperation or despair. Instead, he used it as a catalyst for self-improvement and growth. He channeled his energy into becoming a better version of himself, not in a vain attempt to win her back, but for his own sake. He understood that emotions, no matter how powerful or overwhelming, are transient. They come and go, ebb and flow like the tides. And so he did not indulge in his longing or let it consume him. He allowed it to be, to exist, without letting it take over his life. The longing was there, yes, it was a part of him, a part of his story. But it was not the entirety of his existence. It did not define him. He was not a prisoner of his longing. He was a man, a stoic, who understood his feelings, accepted them, but did not let them control him. Longing can be a powerful feeling, but it doesn't have to control us. Rejection and longing are tough, but as John's story shows, they can be navigated. In the grand tapestry of life, rejection is a common thread that weaves through everyone's story. It's universal, inevitable, and yet it's an experience that can leave us feeling singularly isolated. But remember, you're not alone. Just like John, we all have our stories of unrequited affection. John's story is a poignant reminder of how we can use the principles of Stoicism to cope with rejection. Stoicism teaches us to separate our emotions from our reactions, to understand that while we can't control how others feel about us, we can control our response to it. It's about finding that inner locus of control, that sanctuary within ourselves that remains unswayed by external circumstances. In the face of rejection, Stoicism teaches us to see the situation for what it truly is. Stripped of our emotional biases, it's not about dismissing our feelings, but rather about recognizing that rejection is not a reflection of our worth. It's about understanding that our value does not hinge on the whims of another's affection. But Stoicism isn't just about dealing with rejection, it's also about dealing with longing. It's about learning to let go of the things that are beyond our control. It's about understanding that sometimes the people we yearn for are not meant to be in our lives. And that's okay. It's about finding peace in the present and not letting our longing for the past or the future rob us of our present happiness. In conclusion, the sting of rejection and the ache of longing can be tough to bear. But remember, like John, you have the power to navigate these stormy waters. You have the power to control your response, to find peace within yourself, and to let go of the things that are beyond your control. Remember, rejection doesn't define you, and with the help of Stoicism, you too can navigate the stormy seas of heartbreak.